Welcome to the Mind Body Energy Imbalance Podcast. to another episode of the Mind, Body, Energy, and Balance podcast. I am your host, Samu Mama Yoga, and I'm with my fabulous producer uh, and uh, reluctant co-host, <laughs> Flaw 700, because he's like such an introvert. Hey, Flaw. Hey, what's going on, everybody? <laughs> my volume okay? Can you hear me all right? Yep, yep, oh, yep. good, good, good. The super duper microphone situation. So uh, let's open our show. We give thanks and praise to our ancestors upon whose shoulders that we stand. May the wisdom, may their knowledge, may their fortitude, strength, integrity, and rectitude flow through us as we share from our heart and as we share the inspirited knowledge and information passed to us. May it uplift our community and all those who hear the sounds of our voice. Ashe, ashe, ashe. Absolutely. All right. So today, last week, we talked about, we want to do a recap, right? From last week. Sure. Um, last week was uh, Father's Day. Uh, Sunday, we uh, recorded or we celebrated Father's Day. And um, we uh, have a clip that's circulating uh, uh, stating, you know, there's no man better than a black man. Oh, so you saw that. Oh my lord! Did, Did I you read the it? comments? Some of them, most of them, I don't I be wanting to read, but some yeah, of them. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was definitely going to get into that, and as I'm watching the comments, I, mm -hmm. you know, I just you got to understand that when this podcast takes off to the moon, mm -hmm. there's gonna be plenty more where that come from, and you got to sustain it. You can't block people. Uh, one of the guys was like, "I can't believe this is on YouTube." And I'm listening. And if you listen to the video, it said everybody else is fabulous. Right. <laughs> I, don't I don't know how much credit you can give everybody else. Right. Like, no, no other. And here's my thinking. Right. No other race. You've never heard a white person say mm -hmm. all other races are fabulous. But the white man, it doesn't come off as, you know, when white people say it, they really most of them, I can say mm -hmm. all, most of them, they downplay mm -hmm. everybody else. Mm -hmm. So it's a different type of energy when a mama yoga or somebody else black says the black man or the black woman i, I just mm -hmm. love us we're mm -hmm. not downing mm -hmm. anybody else mm -hmm. and you even said it in the video yet mm -hmm. a few people had the nerve to say how is this even on youtube like it was the worst <laughs> Ever. With all of the, the, the trickery on YouTube, you're going to fuss about that. But that's, you know what that is. That is an incessant, uh, intentional, deliberate, and even insidious, meaning not conscious, uh, determination to make us less than what we should be. And that our love for ourselves means that you have to hate somebody else. Us loving blackness and black people and African ancestry must mean that you hate white people and Europeans and all the rest of the people in the world. That's what it must mean. But that's not that's your that's the persons who left that kind of comment or who thinks like that. That's their flawed projection. You know, if you love you, then you can't possibly love me. That's what right. that says, which is bullshit. And it's also the programming. That person is, you know, has a, a big ass jug of the, you know, racist Kool-Aid that they drink it, you mm -hmm. know, but the reality of it is, you know, the person who wrote that comment, no we the shit. <laughs> you know the black man is everything. You, on Sunday, you be right there wanting him to score and goal and all of that. You just mm -hmm. don't want to see him with your woman. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know, that's it. That's really it. Rather than that, like you said on Sunday, <laughs> run Be right there, run boy, run. You run, know? Jerome, run. Everybody's Jerome. You know, right? So, and I, for that reason, I don't really read the comments because you know, I'll be you know, sensitive. You know what I'm yeah. saying, and want to say something. And although you know, I am. You know, flowing in a try, do my best to flow in the goddess loveliness energy. I'm just hardwired for the fight. 
So, you know, thank God for meditation and 30 plus years of priesthood study and African spiritual understanding and everything. You just have to really um, treat those people like, you know, a child of yours who has a, um, you know, who has a deficiency that you Mm -hmm. just got to kind of love up and let them let them have their tantrum and uh, go on about your life. I said what I said. It stands. And as you said, as our as this show grows and we get more people interested in what we're sharing and offering, there are going to be dissenters and people um, calling for whatever, you know, there may be. I'm not claiming anything. I'm not projecting anything or or hoping anything. But there may be people saying, oh, you got to apologize. <laughs> it's undeniable. It's, it's social media. Everybody has access to you now. Right, right. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, when you do a lot of numbers like that clip did, you're going to get people, you know, talking. Mm-hmm. And so at the end of the day, and like I said earlier, you have to just roll with the punches. You can't censor them because mm-hmm. a way of for your YouTube channel to grow, mm-hmm. they want to just see the realistic, the, the real that you're that you're real, meaning yep. that no matter what they post. Mm-hmm. Be to some type of activity on that post. So I, mm-hmm. I hearted everything, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I put out part of everything. I wasn't going to go write a comment. I mean, I can possibly follow up with it, right. but mm-hmm. that's how you create the activity and the energy, regardless of what right. they say. Hey, right. thanks for the comment. Right, so, right, right. Again, the man. black man hey. ain't shit. Thanks yeah. for the comment. <laughs> yeah, that's all you can do. Right. Hey. Thank you very hey. much. See you Thank at you the top. <laughs> you have to drops next week. See you there. You just gotta, just gotta, you just gotta yeah. say something, and it just keeps you in the algorithm, which is yeah, you know, yeah. every point podcast. You just want to stay in the algorithm. You want to stay in the energy, and mm-hmm. at the end of the day, negative energy sells. Mm-hmm. Um, you can try to show as much love as you want, but at the end of the day, yeah, it's all about the negativity. And they learned yep. they they turned something so positive mm-hmm. into negative. Like I did. I thought once you say fabulous for something, I thought, hey, okay, listen. <laughs> fabulous is you can't get no better than fabulous. So yeah, it's not the way to maybe. Yeah. And, and then you got to think about it too. Some people just read the you know the title. Mm-hmm. Um, that's another mm-hmm. thing too. So they probably just read it and didn't. Yeah, I don't. Them. Yeah, I don't. I don't care. I don't care what you know. I I can't I can't care. I said what I said. I meant what I said. And mm-hmm. if someday ever I have to, you know, get on here for you know people's sensibilities and apologize, I'm an apology. But most likely I'm gonna have meant what I said when I said it. I mean that's just man. I I'm not really cut out for that. So uh, and that's another reason why you have have to have so many uh, streams of money coming in because you know when people talk about canceling you and if you only have one resource or your money's tied to the YouTube algorithm or social media, you got a problem because people are fickle as hell, you know, and you can't allow your livelihood to be just on, you know, those platforms, you know, the platforms have, we've seen in the 10 years or however long, you know, these algorithms have been in play. They've changed at least like 40 times. And sometimes you don't even know the algorithm has changed. So people are watching you and then they can't find you. It's fickle. So my sharing is because I have a calling on my spirit, not to be, uh, a, a social media light, if you will, you know, not a social light mm-hmm. in the media, a social media sphere, sphere. I'm not tripping about how people think I look, or if I look the way somebody else look, or if my waist is this small as someone else. I don't trip about that kind of stuff. I feel like um, I have a message on my spirit. And if this was the time period where you would gather people in a hall and talk to them about what the message is, I'd be doing that. Mm -hmm. But in this time and space that we live in, it's about the digital flow. It really is. And you can't get around it. You know, if you're a person who, as I know several, you know, very, very um, popular teachers, spiritual teachers, they're not on social media at all, not even a little bit but they have somebody running their page for them Mm -hmm. because they know the succubus social media is, you know, you go on there for one thing and you on there two hours later looking at kitten videos or whatever, 
<laughs> the dog you know, you, you, me. Know, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh my Lord, what happened to the time? You know, it's totally unpro unproductive and just sucks your energy, you know? Um, so I don't, I'm not on, I'm not sharing this on social media because, you know, I'm trying to uh, be recognized as the most, you know, baddest, latest social media person. I'm sharing it because this is the venue and the avenue that you share what is on your heart, the message that's on your spirit. And I'm not looking for everybody. There is a specific person that is rocking with Mama Yoga. And I welcome them with open arms. And all others, you know, if it can help you, it's all good. If not, it's all good. But your disagreement, your dissent, your fussing, whatever, that is not my business. I don't have nothing to do with that. That is you and how you feel about you and your life. And I don't have nothing to do with that. So mm -hmm. thank you for the comment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> heart, heart, heart. 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 <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. So anyway, you know, we um we have the message of love and the message of, you know, spiritual connectedness and the message of message of ancestral wisdom. That is what it is, you know? And uh recently I just um uh got a, re a reprint of my chakra healing and balance workbook. Uh, it is now uh, in a full size and it's actually um, a book where you can journal in, in terms of your chakra balances and the things that you're experiencing. And the chakra ebook, uh, the chakra workbook comes as an ebook uh, or it comes as a um, a heart, uh, you know, a tangible paperback. Right. And you can order it on my link tree that's in the um, Mama Yoga Wellness um, bio on Instagram, right? But I gave a talk over this past week about the different chakras and how they help you balance out your energy as well as help you with the success in your life. You know, we often think that to be successful is really about the hard work that you do. But in spiritual thought um, and understanding, Success really is a combination of your vibrational attunement and your effort or your movement towards the doorway that opens once you're vibrationally attuned. Success is not really about hard work. If you do a small study or a slight study of the wealthiest people in the world, they actually do the less, the least. Wealthy people don't work hard. <laughs> They're not labor laboring, you know? It is a flow. And I'm not talking about all, you know, some wealthy people actually, you know, because of whatever they, sometimes it's adventure. So they'll go and jump forest fires and do this kind of thing. That's I'm not that's not everyday nine to five sitting at a job asking somebody, you know, being tied to that money exchange for time and money. The most uh important thing that I have observed from having over the last 30 years client clients who are the one percent of America is that time is the most important thing to them. So they are not interested in exchanging time for money. That is the least way in which you earn finances. The people who exchange time for money are often the least paid than someone who exchanges a solution to a problem for the energy exchange of financial resources. So how your chakra energy lines up with that is that it's about attunement and tuning to the vibrational energy in your spiritual consciousness that's already been assembled for you, such as it's already created as a part of your wealth treasure trove. 
So aligning your chakras helps you tune into what is already there for you in terms of wealth, happiness, health, vitality, all of the things that the richness of life. So what I've observed over all these 30 something years of being a spiritual priestess and working with people and doing spiritual readings for people and counseling and consulting people on their vibrational energy is that amongst black folk, the most damaged chakras for us are the root chakra and the heart chakra. That root chakra is your sense of safety, your sense of protection, your sense of, you know, or the, the realization that your four walls of life are cared for, food, clothing, shelter, and monetary, monetary flow. Food, clothing, shelter, and monetary resources. That your four walls are taken care of, the four essential walls of life. So that's the root chakra. And in most of us, foundational Black Americans, that's blunted. We're always hustling. We're always insecure about how we're going to pay the light bill or the rent. You know, we always trying to figure out how we're going to make this car note. It's always like a, 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 you know, an efforted struggle as to how we are going to deal with our essentials of life. And as long as you are flowing in the space of worry about your essentials of life, you cannot contemplate or even come into attunement, alignment with the higher understanding and faculties of life. People always talking about the greatness of the ancient Egyptians. Yeah. But the first thing they did was set up those four walls. Got your food, your clothing, your shelter, and your your wealth, your monetary flow in place. Now I can use my time to sit back and reflect. What is that star over there? How do I use my energy to create? How do I effortlessly visualize the manifestation that I want to three dimensional? Right? So as long as a person is struggling and have financial or four wall insecurity, you cannot elevate your life. You can't relax and flow your energy into manifestation. You will always be efforting manifestation. Yeah. The next blunted chakra in most foundational Black Americans is the heart chakra. That capacity to love, that capacity to be open, that capacity towards self-healing, self-love, self-gratification, that capacity to be a magnet and pull towards you in an in a energetic way, the success and love and great manifestations you desire in your life. That heart chakra in most foundational Black Americans that I've observed has been blunted. So between the root chakra <laughs> and the heart chakra, which are in the central column of the body, the root chakra is at your sex organs. <sighs> Excuse me. The heart chakra obviously is in between the breasts, at the breastplate, just a little bit above where the breast line um ends or begins i should say right just at the top you can't see me but at the top so teaching how to heal those uh, vibrational energies within you is a key focus of my chakra healing workbook there are certain words of power and vibrational utterances that help balance those chakras. And I don't say break up or open or close, 
once you start chanting those words, the spirit knows what you need. You may need to open your root chakra. You may need to close your root chakra. You may need to bring the balance that is required, an open and a close, right? It may be spinning the wrong way. You begin to use the mantras, it will spin that chakra in the right direction. Same thing with the heart chakra. You may need to open your heart chakra, or you may need to have it spin in a certain direction. Right? Also within the chakra healing workbook is uh, the crystals and the aromas or the ends or the fragrances that you would use to help bring those energies into alignment, into attunement. Now, the crystals and the fragrances are not exhaustive. There are literally, you know, I mean, goodness, it's just so many. The book would have been like, you know, this big. It would have been like 7,000 pages. It's not exhaustive, but it is a very good foundational offering. The crystals that are in uh, the chakra healing workbook and the uh, aromas or the essential oil suggestions. Very, very good um, foundational. Um um suggestions that are there so you want to begin to bring your chakra energy into alignment so that you can manifest via vibration and attunement as opposed to effort the effort comes once the doorway that you have created with your energy presents itself. Hey, there's some metaphysics to be talking today, y'all. Mm -hmm. Once the doorway you have created through your visualizations, through the visceral experiences while you're visualizing, there's a doorway you're creating. And that doorway will show up in the three dimension in the form of a person calling you, in the form of some email, in the form of a letter, in the form of somebody saying, come go to this event with me. And you go there and boom, what you've been visualizing shows up. That's where the effort should take place. Right? I notice in my life, if I'm looking for something and I can't find it, I stop looking. I just let it go. And then once I release the effort, <laughs> I stumble across it. It shows up. And I'll be like, oh, hello. No effort. That's the trick that those who govern or run are running the world have sold all of us. That you have to work hard. And you gotta, you know, you gotta put that time in. And you got to work hard and break your back and be a hard worker. Those people get the less, the least. The people who gain the most are the people who use spirit, chakra energy, vibration, and alignment or attunement to manifest. Yeah, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. You guys, yeah, you were saying about to say uh, something. Uh -huh. No, I, I, I definitely what you said about once you stop looking for things, it pops up. That's yep. the thing, definitely in the community. It's it's like it's like a running joke, you know. Yep. Um, but of course you broke it down into um Afro scientific uh terms. But um yep. and another thing just to, I love that. Hey, wait a minute now, let me hashtag that Afro scientific. I love that. Go ahead. Terms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, for me, like I mm -hmm. go to the gym and I'm in the gym trying to, you know, trying to make more gains and mm -hmm. the thinking process at the time. Well, let's just go bench pressing for one. Mm -hmm. My high is like 325. Mm -hmm. um, and OK, that's that looks good. But usually when you leave the gym, you are expecting a little bit of pain somewhere right so if i work on chest i want to fill it tomorrow so i can stretch it out and get it out my system because like you just opened up more blood into the system so you just opened up your veins so more blood can go into the system and create a bigger muscle mm -hmm. i wasn't really getting um 
physical the physical response that I thought I would get by lifting heavy. Mm-hmm. Once I stopped lifting heavy, heavy, and I did heavy reps, meaning mm-hmm. less, I pulled back. I wasn't working as hard as I had to mm-hmm. off the one or two reps. Let me just get this one up and just, you know, test my might. Right. Once I stopped going heavy and I stopped mm-hmm. around, like, let's say 275 that I can know I can rep multiple times, I started to feel a change in my physical, like my mm-hmm. body. I started to feel it. Like my, my chest is talking to me now. It's having mm-hmm. a conversation with me because it what needed to be done was done. And I did that by pulling back. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to do it's heavy. And it didn't work for me. I'm not saying that for you guys or whoever out there that wants to go heavy, whatever works for you. But doing less, less weight, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. actually probably going to put more mass or more muscle on me. So I just related mm-hmm. to that. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. you go back and do less. That's um, right. Could be anything. Less studying. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I was watching Avatar. Just just mm-hmm. funny. I was watching Avatar. Mm-hmm. It's like three hours and 20 minutes long. You know what I did? <laughs> I watch less. One right. Hour the <laughs> do the whole three hours. <laughs> right, 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 right. What's the do it? <laughs> right. Like now, you know, the young folks are saying when they got a concept that somebody's sharing, they're like, say less. You know, yeah, I got yeah. it. Let's go. It's less. Less is it's, always best. <laughs> it's the space we're in. So your effort in what it is you're trying to achieve if you keep running up against a roadblock where it seems like it's not going. So your physical effort has not is not congruent with the doorway that you've opened up psychically, spiritually, or in, in terms of your attunement. So you got to stop, pull back, and begin to put more effort into visualizing and seeing the success that you want in order to use that psychic spiritual energy to create the doorway, right? Because the doorway is not open. If you are efforting, 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 I'm going here, I'm doing this, I'm putting it up. Why isn't it working? I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing. Why isn't it working? I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing. Because the door is not open and the way you open the door is you tell universal energy that you're aligned and attuned with what it is you want you ever meet somebody or not meet somebody but all of us have had this experience in our life where you keep meeting the same man or woman oh yeah yeah yeah. that's it's like the same person all the time because your energy is attuned to that vibration. Whatever healing, adjustments, life lesson, growth has not, you you haven't made the change. So you're going to keep attracting and being attracted to the same person until you adjust your attunement your psychic energy, your magnetism. And we think, oh, well, that's just my type. It's your type for a reason, because that type got your life lesson. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And every time you keep moving on and on and on and not dealing with the lesson that that energy, that your vibration is pulling into your life by the person that manifests or 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 uh, uh, has that type of energy, every time you keep moving on and on and on, you're just going to keep getting the same person because you have not made an adjustment in your attunement. Your dial is still set to 89.1 when what you really want is diamond 0.87. That's what you really want but you have not gotten the life lesson of (laughs) 89.1. So it's like, it's the same thing with the success that we want, with the monetary gains that we want, with the, you know, the wealth and the riches that we want. Tune in to be able to open up the doorway to the treasure trove that is your wealth. That's already assigned to you, right? 
In spiritual understanding and African spirituality, we understand that you are a vibrational being housed in a physical vessel, that you are inspirited into a being called a human as a baby. Your life's blessings and things you need to overcome are already scripted. So the wealth that is due to you, financial wealth, is available to you at certain vibrational attunements, at certain, you know, capacities as you grow into a human being or as you grow into an adult, from a child to an adult. You have free will, however, to choose which doorways you open and which doorways you allow, which, which circumstances you allow into your life. You have free will. So as you grow and experience your life, you begin to get these life lessons that if you're attuned or have some type of quote unquote awakeness, you see, you begin to see a pattern. And once you decide that you're going to adjust your vibration so that that pattern is resolved, is healed, is learned. Okay, I got it. You tell the universe vibrationally, I got that lesson. I got it. Let's go on to the next thing. Then the next set of treasures that's for you is presented. Like everybody has a certain amount of wealth that's ascribed or assigned to them. But everybody don't have Oprah's wealth. Because everybody is not Oprah's vibrational being. You have your vibrational asset that is assigned to you. And the life lesson, the life journey is learning how to attune and manipulate in a good way for your success. So the chakra energies are really just that. And healing and aligning those energies help you get to and remove the layers, get to the healing and remove the layers so that you can open the next doorway of treasure for you. You can choose a different spouse. You know, you can heal up, sit down and assess Okay, so what about my heart energy and my root chakra that have me extracting the same person? You know, why? What is it about this person's vibrational energy or this vibrational energy that I'm so magnetic to? This is shadow work that, you know, people are calling, right? It's looking at the hurt self, the dark self. You know, the persona that is conditioned and, you know, blunted, if you will, hurt from traumas and such. That takes a lot of courage to look at what you're hurt by and make a consorted effort to heal that hurt. To give, my birth name is Angie, Angela. Angela to give Angie some salve for her hurt as a little girl who didn't give whatever, daddy issues, whatever. Takes a lot of courage because that mirror, <laughs> the mirror in, um, which one of them? What's that child's name? The, the fairy tale where the child would look in the mirror and say, who's the fairest of them all? Which one was that? Not Little Red Riding know. Hood. Or Snow White. Is it? Was it? I yeah. The, the so-called evil stepmother would look in the mirror and say, who oh, is the most beautiful in the land? And they would be like, not you, bitch. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> not you, child. It's this other girl. And she would be all mad, whatever. The mirror that we each have to look in, oftentimes is we don't want to look in that mirror. Mm -hmm. Not that deep. Just enough to brush the hair and put some cream on your face, do your eyes or whatever. But to look in that mirror and really look at the hurt and make a intentional 
a serious effort at healing that vibrational, those vibrational wounds is the, it's the stuff of grown ass folks. Got to put your big, big people on these on for that. And so a lot of people won't do that. You know, in fact, the majority, this is scientific, this is regular, so this ain't Afro science, although it is Afro scientific in a way, but the science is that the majority of people who have addiction issues are trying to quiet the hurt. Mm-hmm. They don't want to hear, feel, or deal with. It's a, it's an escape. They're hurt by something that they're not consciously aware of or don't want to be consciously aware of. So they want to dull. They want to, you know, float through life as opposed to grounding and looking at the, the trauma and then healing and dealing with the trauma. So the chakra healing um, is one of the offerings that I, I'm so blessed and honored to share um, with the community. Um, like I said, I just taught a class. Um, I was called in to do a workshop over the last uh, last week, and it was met with resounding. People had instant, um, you know, instant experiences and instant successes nothing is overnight you didn't get banged up overnight you didn't get hurt that that shadow self didn't get hurt overnight your attunement didn't get out of whack overnight you know and a lot of us it's our life lesson to constantly adjust the vibration adjust the tune of our spirit so that we can manifest, you know? So um, that's one of the things that I wanted to share. I'm really, really proud of that, um, that, uh, that work. And um, all, it's just so, uh, like I say, you know, honored that the ancestors would have me share and be of service to people in that way. Absolutely. Mm, nice. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So let's get to it. <laughs> Speaking of attunement, <laughs> I saw over last week, I think it was, Dr. Umar Ifantunde. I love Dr. Umar, you know. Uh, but he was on a talk show. I think it's a mm-hmm. podcast. Yeah, everything's a podcast now. Yeah, I guess. I think it was a, he's on a brother's podcast, Three Brothers. I don't know the name of that. You know the name of that podcast? Nope, never never seen those guys before. Oh. Well, anyway, he we got to give them credit because we are, you know, talking about their show. So, um he was on the Brothers podcast and <laughs> I the thing about this is why I say I'm in is the ish. Uh Daily Wrap Up Crew. The Daily Wrap Up Crew. Okay, so Dr. Uh, Umar Johnson was on, uh, Dr. Umar Ifantunde was on uh, the Daily Wrap-Up Crew, and he was talking about, you know, Black women and Black men and holding Black men accountable for um, the young boys, for boys, right? And saying that our um, relationship is a collective um demise is collective right based on you know the cultural and systemic assaults we still have to take accountability for raising up our communities not just our individually family excuse me our individual uh, individual family cells but we have to still take accountability for our community and I thought that that would be a great chat up to to uh, to have some perspective about. Um, I know you um, listen to the show as well, and I'd yeah. like to hear your perspective of, around some of the key points he made, Flo. Yeah, um, well, just like you, um, mm-hmm. with you know Afro scientific terms, um, mm-hmm. a lot of us kind of speak in the the basic terms, right? So I kind of got mm-hmm. with the podcast guys were saying. And mm-hmm. I get what Dr. Umar was saying, and it's based off what we've talked about before. It's about accountability. It's about, mm-hmm. you know, nobody, listen, we can sit here and say the world owes us. We can, or we can do something about it. Right. What Umar was trying to tell them is, yes, it's, you know, it was a setup with, no matter what decade you go to. Right. Whether it's right. 
out the house, or whether when he put crack in the ghetto, or when he put AIDS in the ghetto, or when he, you know, uh, Bill Clinton and his, um, you know, prison, uh, you know, which is locked up, you know, black people, we get it. Right. But what are we going to do about it? Come on we now. Get it. Okay, that happened. What are mm-hmm. we going to do about it? And mm-hmm. um, that's why I say I, I understand what the guys were saying because that's just common, common conversation that we have over here in the ghetto. Right. Nothing's our fault. We didn't do it. Right. We didn't tell, um, you know, Keisha to date Pookie. And right. <laughs> the thing is, a lot of times with men, we uh, look at the women. We look at the women and the guys they date. If we feel like the guy is less than us, mm-hmm. we'll take the woman. And that's kind of what the conversation is. If if a woman dates a Pookie, mm-hmm. you can't have me afterwards. Right. And right. you know it's it's a selfish way of thinking. And what Dr. Umar was trying to get them to understand is I'm not talking about you. I'm not gonna lie, the guy with the cast on his foot, he was yeah. getting away so much. Like, bro, we're not, <laughs> we're not no, he, he was all in his feelings. He was right? him. He was like, somebody <laughs> hurt him. Somebody like, hurt him. You can tell, like ev- not everybody needs a podcast, and that's the problem with <laughs> the podcast. There's a lot of times guys and women they come uh, with tell their side of the story instead right. of just telling, hey, this is the entire story, you know? Right. Everybody wants to talk about them. It's mm-hmm. not about you. Nothing that we ever... Now, what you went through could be relatable. But right. as a man, mm-hmm. you still have to finish the conversation with what are we going to do about it? Right. Yes, she did that to me. The government right. did this to me. Right. My kids don't like me. Whatever. Listen, I tell people all the time and people disagree with me, right? Mm-hmm. I'm prepared for a few things. And one of them is like I just mentioned, I'm prepared for my kids to for, turn it back on me in any point mm-hmm. of their lives. Mm-hmm. They're right. Mm-hmm. They don't owe me anything. Mm-hmm. I brought them here. It's mm-hmm. my job to make sure they're good. If for any reason they go, you know, dad is too controlling or that, whatever they were right, and they want to rebel against me, they're right. Right? And a lot of people disagree. No, my kids will always know nobody. Mm-hmm. Nobody, you're not promised mm-hmm. nobody for your entirety. You understand? Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, is you just have to be prepared. You have to be prepared for the downfalls and have to have you know a game plan of what you can do about it, right? Mm-hmm. Also, with Dr. Umar and I kind of related to like Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey talks a lot about what men should do. Mm-hmm. Well, what men should do comes from men actually that take action, right? Because you take action like me. Once again, I might sound like I'm all over the place, but I'm going to lead it back to where it's going. For Mm -hmm. me, I left my W-2. I took action, and now I run a few businesses, and I'm doing okay. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is tell everybody about this. Mm -hmm. People aren't listening. Yeah, They'll tell you that I got a 16-hour shift I got to go to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you go, and you like that? You're going to do nothing. You're going to do right. nothing about that. So I piggyback off to what Steve Harvey says, and I'm going back to Dr. Umar. What Steve mm-hmm. Harvey says: No man should enter a relationship asking for 50-50. Right. No man should go into a relationship wanting certain things. But that comes from a man who has it. Mm-hmm. If you got it, mm-hmm. yes, you go into a relationship more whole, more of a provider, and more of a lover, more of everything, because you took care of you, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So then we go back to the Dr. Umar situation, right? Like, I agree with Steve Harvey, but you just have to be of, you have to be qualified to do that. Not every man can right. not be 50-50. If you actually look at what's going on right now, it's a lot of guys mm-hmm. out surfing right now. Right, the women, right. Talk about this. The women are actually the CEOs mm-hmm. and the mortgage is under their name. Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's where we are. But we mm-hmm. can make a change. Now, back to what Dr. Umar was saying. It's like, what can we do about it? And that just comes from a place of men who aren't, you know, who who are in tune with themselves and working on themselves and can see what they can do for everybody else. Mm-hmm. That young man was talking about was um, it's not his fault that she dated a pookie. Right, right. Fine. We get right. that. Dr. Umar was saying this, but why is there a pookie? Right. It shouldn't be a pookie. You right. guys are going to find a pookie. Right. You're pookie. That's if right. We're working, we're working on ourselves and being the better. And honestly, what you talked mm-hmm. about before, these dating sites, mm-hmm. these women, if you stop looking, 
Mm-hmm. Like, fine. You mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you work on yourself. That's right. You make might fall into your hands. So I just think that a lot of the energy that we put out there is so negative. It's so off. Mm-hmm. That everything we everything we're doing is wrong. Mm-hmm. Everything. You mentioned social media, mm-hmm. right? I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have the. I shouldn't have the privilege or the opportunity to look at so many women. I shouldn't have right. to. I shouldn't have to look at. It, it was never designed for me right. to have a thousand. Not saying I do. <laughs> it was never meant for a man to have a thousand women just at your leisure. Right. Everything right. we do is wrong. So. What Dr. Umar is saying is, mm-hmm. what are we going to do as mm-hmm. men, right? Mm-hmm. We might have to be, and this is what I was thinking when I was watching the video. There, There's going to have to be a group of men, and we could be that group, where we got to be like the sacrificial, sacrificial lambs, right? Mm-hmm. Where we got to be the ones that just makes it better for the generation to come before us, and we might miss out on love. Mm-hmm. a relationship, a family. Because obviously we don't know what we are doing out here, right? Mm-hmm. You're a 40-year-old man. And I think I'm, I don't know if I talked to you about this or somewhere else, but you could be a 40-year-old man and you're dating another 40-year-old woman. And y'all already have been through so many things and it's hard for you to kickstart that because mm-hmm. a couple who might have started 20 years before you, they're already working on therapy. Mm-hmm. They're already working on vacations. Their kids are already grown. Like they've already hit a certain plateau mm-hmm. at this age. Here I am at, as a four-year-old man trying to start fresh. Right. What does it look like? It right. was never meant to be. Right. It was never never meant to be that way. Mm-hmm. So I just agree a lot with Dr. Umar was saying. Um, because it's about accountability, and we talked about that um mm-hmm. on and on, but yeah. No, it's, it's points well taken. You know, what I took from uh, doc, what Dr. Umar was saying is that he kept bringing the one brother and the brother with the cast. I guess we should yes. give him get a name uh, no. for him. But <laughs> he kept trying to bring him back to community and understanding community because the young man kept saying, why should I settle for a masculine woman who has kids with another man? Like, you know, like like his whole mindset. And I'm going to tell you those, his expression was from a place of hurt Mm -hmm. and a place of, you know, uh, an anger towards women, really, you know, a masculine woman, she a masculine woman, right? And Dr. Umar was like, well, okay, why is she masculine? And again, not excusing women. We shouldn't, I'm not saying that women, you know, especially um, foundational black uh, American women that we should be all up in a man face and so rough and so, you know, aggressive. That's not even the natal energy of a woman. But however, we are at war. We are subconsciously under assault. And so if you remove the protection of the family, which we talked about a couple of episodes ago, and we'll probably continue, the, the program was to remove the protection, the provider and the protection and the stabilizing energy of the black family from the core of the family, which is our men. That way the women and children are left in the bush, in the forest, in the jungle of North America, unprotected. So she is going to, she got to do what she feels she needs to do through slavery assault, through Jim Crow assault, through seeing her children lynched and hung, through seeing her men that she would have to love and hide her love for him because other folks would then come kill him. You see, so the energy of masculinity in our women was brought about by systemic conditions of our people, foundational black Americans in this country. And that is what I think Dr. Umar was trying to get the young men, particularly the brother with the cast who kept rebutting that he wasn't having no masculine woman and a woman with kids by Pookie or whatever he was talking about. Dr. Umar was trying to get him to see my, my brother. She's masculine because of a reason because we are out of place 
because our young men are not being mentored by those of us who call ourselves men. That's not excusing women's um, aggression and hurt towards men. Like you ain't got no business jumping up in a man's face. You just don't. Especially if you see him as a man, he's not going to have that, you know? And as a woman, you don't want to move that way. But here we are. Masculinity creates that type of aggression, fear, worry, anxiety, the blunted root chakra, right? The, 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 the um, destruction of the four necessities of life, food, clothing, shelter, and your monetary flow has created in our women a certain aggression and a fear around not being able to sustain because she's sustaining on her own. I agree with Dr. Umar in that regard. I'm not excusing women with bad behavior. I'm not excusing that. I'm just saying we have to look at the whole and stop blaming each other for, you know, our um, captivity and assault and the remnants and residue of, you know, the, the slave dynamic and what has happened to our people in this country, foundational Black American. We have to stop blaming each other. And like you said, Flaw, find out what we're going to do, what's the solution, how are we going to help heal each other, for real. Yeah. Two, mm -hmm. two things, right? Mm -hmm. Back off what you say, and this is coming from me, not Mama Yoga, so if there's any controversy in this, um, you just don't understand what I'm trying to say, sorry. But usually, thank when a man, you for the uh, comment. Usually, usually, yeah, usually, usually when a man is speaking on masculine energy like that, he's coming from a feminine place of energy. If he's carrying so much feminine energy, then he must be attracting the opposite energy, which is the masculine female. To me, he comes off as a feminine male, which is not the bad. guy with the, the guy with the cat. Yes, yeah. comes off as a feminine because he doesn't have. Because personally, me, when I walk into the room, mm -hmm. regardless of how masculine a woman is, she'll tell me, "Hey." I smoke, but I'll stop if you want me to. Right. You <laughs> what you want, baby? I got you. <laughs> whatever you need, whatever you want, I will stop. Because you're because you walk into the room. I right. am when I walk into the personally me, when mm -hmm. I walk into the room, some mm -hmm. things can change. Right. Come and I now. have conversations with people, you know, they'll tell me, you know, I feel like I can let my guard down because I'm around you. Yep. If they can't with you, buddy, then it's with you. That's one yep. thing. Like that is, it's gotta be understood. Like you can't. Obviously, opposites attract, right? Mm -hmm. And so, whatever you're attracting is what Mama Yoga talked about before. Like, you got to mm -hmm. get yourself together. Understand. Number two, <laughs> another controversial thing that I'll say, but please understand me. So, I think we need to mind our business. Yeah. Hmm. So, one thing Dr. Umar was talking about was, and just like you touched on, mm -hmm. we're not here to talk about the women. They're not here. Right. Right. Come on. So us. Come Only on. We can, like, first off, women can't, you know, put themselves in our shoes and we can't put ourselves in women's shoes. Mm -hmm. Women know what they need to do, but that's up to them as a collective to get together and have, and, you know, have talks in women groups and have conversations to lift uplift each other. And then mm -hmm. after the men have their conversations and we talk about what we can do better, then we can come together afterwards. That's right. That's right. But that's as far right. as me having me having a, a podcast with a woman, just to argue with her about who's right and who's the victim, it gets us nowhere. But that's what that's we do. Right. That's what I say. Not that's everybody right. needs a podcast. It is crazy. Right. <laughs> you know, hey, I just want to argue with you because I'm a man and I don't agree with, like, a clip will come up and they'll see something about how a man or a woman reacted in this day mm -hmm. debate. Their hurt, their mm -hmm. reality, because your reality could be the truth. Mm -hmm. It's not her reality. Right. It's not is reality. We're arguing mm -hmm. all realities. And that's what they try to do with Dr. Umar. He never said they were wrong. Mm -hmm. In some cases, they were wrong. Yeah. But we're not here to talk about the women. Right. Well, right. now, what he also said was, when I do have women in my presence, I let them know. I check them, too. Check that's them too. right. That's there ain't right. No women here, so I'm talking yeah. to you. Right. That's, that's, just, that's just what it is for me. Yeah. Yeah. No, Poor it kept guys. trying to. Yeah. I mean, it's it goes back to the reality. And this may be whatever it is, controversial, or whatever. But the reality of, you know, the brother was saying, well, she's why, she, you know, this sister out here dating Pookie and whoever, you know. And Umar was saying, Dr. Umar was saying, 
why does Pookie exist? Mm -hmm. The reality, the energetic, spiritual, Afro-scientific, scientific, universal scientific reality is that women cannot raise men to be men. You can show him and give him an example of what a loving person is. But the, the, the energetic reality is a man needs the reflection and the vibration of a man to really step into his manhood, to really stand as strong as he can and as rooted as he can in that masculine energy. So you got pookies. Dr. Umar was making the point. You have pookies or, you know, men who are not really standing in their manhood. By and large, because the women are raising the men without the presence of the male figure and the male dominant, the male energy for that young boy. That's why if you have, it's, it's universal law. And I know sisters going to say and have said in, in many groups that I've been in over these last however many years, you know, tens of years, decades rather, women say, well, I'm raising a man. I can raise a man. You saying that out of necessity because you don't have a male, a man, a man, not just a male not just a biological form, but a man who has principle. You have, you don't have that presence for your son. So you are doing what you have to do. And you're teaching your son how to be a good person, how to be a righteous person in his spirit, but you cannot teach him how to be a man. That is a man's job. That's a man's inference. And it's not that a, a young man has to sit down and the man say, okay, this is how you be a man. No, it's by watching and relating and discussing and being in the company and the presence of a principled man. That is how men learn how to be men. So Umar was on point as far as I'm concerned. You know, why is there a pookie? There's a pookie because men have not systemically, our men, foundational black American men have not systemically created a reach back by and large. Now, I want to say, because I personally know several tens and tens of men who do care for children, male children who are not their children. You know, we're doing it. It's not that we're not doing it. It's just not enough. Everybody's mindset has not shifted to that. We are foundational Black Americans. The village mentality has been beat out of most of us. And then as we try to give um, care and love to, you know, as those men have created vessels in which they provide for, care for men the young boys to help them, you know, grow up with the sense of manhood, you have, you know, destruction come and shut it down, or, you know, somebody creates a drive-by and somebody gets hurt or killed. You know what I'm saying? It's just a continual onslaught that is destructive to, you know, those people and is wearing on, wearing on those people who say, you know what, I'm going to create this group and just go get the boys, take them fishing, you know, just be with them. And they will see an example and psychically, energetically get an example of manhood. Those types of organizations and things have come under attack time and time again, which makes people poor. But the reality of it is, is that we need our men to teach Pookie in them. Just the, it's just an energetic reality. Right. So I applaud Umar um, and I applaud the young men for a level of receptivity. Um, and prayerfully, you know, we can all make our adjustments. Um, don't be sending us no emails talking about mama yoga is against women or whatever.
What's that, Flo? Mm-hmm. Was that a clapping? Oh, good. Oh, yeah. My my internet connection must be doing something weird. This is reality. Yeah, it's, podcast, it's, it's, it's raining, it's thundering, <laughs> it's, so things is about to get a little spooky. I heard the thunder while we were talking, so if the internet is all right. Yeah, oh, it's weird. getting a little weird. So we can end on that note. You know, listen, the it's the village. You can't really complain about how masculine the women are and how feminine the men are if we're not really trying to share and uplift each other uh, instead of just running to our particular, you know, refuges and not really trying to work together and help each other come up out of that. And I applaud everybody who is out here doing their best to make a difference and even just being an example of, you know, the divine energies that flow through us, masculine and feminine, you know, whatever side of the table you stand on. Um, So, you know, we give thanks for the conversation and let's see what we each can do about it, you know, and uh, love each other up. That's the main thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right. Anything else, Flo? I caught you in the middle of your electrolytes. How's your no, fast that's going? Good. <laughs> it's going pretty good. It's going mm-hmm. good. Uh, good. All right. Good, 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 good. Keep it up. Keep it up. At least you're giving your digestion a rest. rest. Yeah. You know, nothing else is happening. <laughs> <It's> happening. <laughs> At least you're giving it a rest. Yeah. All right, good people. Uh, We're going to close out here. Uh, Leave us a comment. We love all of your comments and your, um, your, uh, you know, sharing with us. We appreciate you so much. Uh, And um, you can go on to, uh, again, my Instagram page, Mama Yoga Wellness, and you can get the Chakra Healing book. And um, if you want, DM me uh, for when the next uh, class and workshop is. I will let you know. Uh, about that and sign you up for it so um yeah that's great love one another be kind care for one another and we'll see you next time